Shalom, Israel. Shalom. Most high in Christ. Bless. It's your brother, Officer Samariah. Today, reading for me. Brother Ruvain. Can you uh, turn that up for me a little bit, brother? All right. Giving all praise to the Most High and His Son, Jesus the Christ, for allowing us to gather once again to go over His Word as it is written. All right. Um, today's topic is not going to be one that, that's long. All right. But it's one that's um, absolutely necessary with us as we come into repentance. We find out we're Israel. Okay. And we have to understand that it's it's more than just, oh, I'm Israel. I'm good now. It, it's more than just that. Okay. It's, it's having that godly sorrow behind your repentance so that way you can seek the kingdom of heaven first in all things. So today's topic is called Godly Sorrow Works Repentance. All right. Godly Sorrow Works Repentance. Uh, let's start, like always, in Romans chapter 3 and verse 3. For the namesake of the title, oh, I'm sorry, but for the namesake of the class, all right, as it is written, Godly Sorrow Works Repentance. Whatever. This is the book of Romans, chapter 3, verse 3. For what if some did not believe? So that's the question. So what if some don't believe? Okay, what if some don't believe that salvation only pertains to the so-called black, Hispanics, and Native Americans? What if some don't believe that our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, was a so-called black man? That God's black, that the angels are black, that the prophets are so-called black? What if some don't believe that? Why? Because they look out into society and see the example of our people being in such a low estate. We can't think, no, these are the chosen people of God. What if some don't believe that, Reed? For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? Shall them not believe in these things make any that this Bible say not come to pass? Read. God forbid. Meaning, no, everything in this Bible must come to pass, all right? Christ said in the, in the book of John that the scripture cannot be broken, all right? The Messiah is not going to be found a liar. So whether or not you believe is not up to us. It's up to us to just plant the seed. That's it. All right. It's the most side that provides the increase. So when you come into repentance, you have a certain zeal about you. Right. You want to blast everybody and give them every scripture that you know. But at a certain point, you understand there has to be a two thirds club. All right. And some people. All right. Unfortunately, our people are real quick to be VIP for the two thirds club. All right. Some people don't want to hear it. It's not up to us to get anybody to repent. It's up to us to say, you know what? You're an Israelite. Keep the commandments and the faith in Christ. That's it. Keep it moving. All right. But those people that do accept it and they want to learn, they have to know that it's it's more than just saying, OK, I repent. It's having that godly sorrow. When you go back and read the history and you see how wicked we were toward our father. All right. And how we're not worthy to, to be folded back to come back into the graft of this thing. Then you understand, well, that's what it means for godly sorrow works repentance, having that godly sorrow within us. To say, you know what, I'm not worthy of the mercy for him to send his only begotten son for me to come back and repent after I spent 30 years, 40 years, 50 years in the midst of sin. It's a heavy, heavy thing when you continuously think about it. But read on. God forbid. God forbid. Read. Yea, let God be true, but every man a liar. So that's the message we send to our people. Let's let God be true, but every man a liar. All right. You come with these big words and, and, and all this speech. It sounds good. But what scripture can you produce for me to prove or justify anything coming out of your mouth? We have to let God be true and every man a liar. Read as it is written. So for the for the namesake of, of the class, as it is written. All right. You'll you'll never you'll you'll never say thus saith Officer Mariah. You'll never hear, thus saith Bishop Nathaniel. You'll never hear say, this brother or this brother or this brother. It's always as is written according to the word of God. And this is why, read. That thou mightest be justified in thou sayings. Read. And mightest overcome when thou art judged. That's why we have to go as it is written. We have to be justified in our sayings. That way, when we're overcome, okay, when people try to question us, that they can't come against this. You can't gainsay what we say. Why? Because we go as it is written. It's not what I said. It's what the Bible says. All right. There's an old saying in the world, the truth hurts. And 10 times out of 10, 
it's a hard pill to swallow. It's kind of like when I was a kid and I had to take cough medicine, right? Like Robitussin, things like that. Those things don't 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 taste good, but you know, taking them, it's gonna heal you. All right. It's the same thing with, with with the word of God. You hear certain things and you're like, oh my goodness, that I don't know. It's a tough pill to swallow, but the end result, okay, is everlasting life. So no matter how big that pill is, and no matter how tough it is to take down, know that the end result is going to be more than worth it. All right? Let's go to 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17. Again, today's topic is godly sorrow works repentance. 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 17. And, and when you have it, call and read it, brother. All right, this is the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ. So if any man or woman, because again, the Bible is written in a masculine context. If any man or woman come into repentance under the acknowledgement that they are an Israelite and want to keep the commandments, read. He is a new creature. That person becomes a new creature. All right. That person becomes a new creature in Christ. Read on. All things are passed away. All things are passed away. Not some things. Okay, because there's a lot of people, not all Israel is Israel, like how you read it in the in the book of Romans. All right. There's even people that come along with the with the super shaloms. All right. That 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 that's not really fully converted yet. Okay. All old things are passed away because you have some people that hang certain things over your head. We have to understand that when Christ said he that is whole is in no need of a physician, that applies to all of us. The law was not made for the righteous, but it was made for, it was made for those of us that came into this that weren't wearing fringes, that were whoremongers, that didn't keep the Sabbath, that didn't keep the dietary law, that had malice and hatred to our brothers and sisters. All right. And there's some people because when you come in with these certain spirits, some people it takes a little longer than other people to alleviate those things and, and get rid of them. And you have some people like, oh, you know what? I remember that brother when he came in. He was real, he was real big on the name, the name, the name, the name. <laughs> Even though now it's been two years and he may have a clear understanding now that there's no particular name that gets us saved. But it's the obedience to the commandments in the faith of his son. That's right. All right. And we're going to do a, uh, a, a name topic real soon. All right. That person may have a clear understanding. Like, for instance, my brother here, he says, yeah. And that's perfectly okay. I say Mosai, I say God. I can't tell him, hey brother, watch out for this brother because he says he says the name Yah, okay? As long as he's keeping the commandments, all right, in the faith of, of, of Yah's son, then I'm a-okay with that, all right? But I digress, okay? We all become new creatures, all right, when we come into repentance. Everything's passed away. We all become new again, all right? Is there, is there a more on that? Yes. Uh, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. All things become new. You see that? All things become new. All right? Now, the only way that the all things could become new is if you humble yourself down to the commandments of the Most High. All right? That's the only way that you be, become, become new because how can you become a new creature in Christ all right. When you you still are a whoremonger, you still have a smoking spirit, you still have a spirit where you want to get drunk. You're not becoming new. You just are a nigga that knows that he's an Israelite. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. That's all it is to become new. You have to have the discipline of keeping the commandments in the faith in Christ. So no matter what spirit this brother carried when he was in the world, when I was in the world, when anybody was in the world, I'm not going to hold that against them because I understand, okay, you know what? They're striving. Just like Paul said, I die daily. Repentance is a continuous thing, but it's the godly sorrow behind the repentance is going to get us the kingdom, all right? Christ told Peter, he said what? The, 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 the uh, cock will crow three times. You will, he said, you will deny me three times. And he did. You think Peter ain't getting the, the, the kingdom? Of course he's getting the kingdom. Peter was the head apostle after Christ died. But why is he getting the kingdom? Because he had godly sorrow that worked repentance. That's why. Let's go to Psalms 52 or 51 verse 2. 
No, I'm sorry. Proverbs 24, verse 16. I'm sorry. Proverbs 24, verse 16. All right. So because there's there's a question that's asked to me all the time. Oh, so you're perfect. So you're perfect. So you're perfect. And when someone asks you that, that's a setup question. Mm -hmm. Because no matter what you say, then they can say, okay, see, exactly. So uh, why are you telling us to be perfect? First and foremost, the son of the Most High said, be ye therefore perfect. Last I checked, Christ wasn't found a liar. Okay? So he's telling us that perfection could be achieved. Now, are we perfect right now? Absolutely not. Otherwise, my name would be Jesus and we'd all be in the kingdom of heaven already. Okay? Right now. But we strive for perfection. That's that's a Christian cop-out. Well, we can't be perfect, so let me just no longer be perfect. Let me just not try to be perfect. No. That's a Christian cop-out. Okay? Why well, read this. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 24, verse 16. For a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. It says that a just man falleth seven times. OK, so someone that comes in repentance, we have to understand. All right. Unfortunately, in this walk, there's going to be brothers and sisters that. Are overcome by their lusts and temptations and go back into sin. I've seen it over and over and over and over again. First off, real quick, hold that. Give me First John one verse nine. First John one verse nine, real quick. I don't have it written down, but this just popped into my head. First John one verse nine. This is something that that we have to understand as we take this walk and we strive for that perfection and we have that godly sorrow to work on repentance to get the kingdom of heaven. This is the book of 1 John, chapter 1, verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. So now we have to um, we have to confess our sins. That way the Most High can be faithful to forgive them. But jump up to verse 8. Verse 8. If we say that we... Uh, excuse me. If we say that we have no sin... So if a brother or sister says, I have no sin... All right. Because, again, the, the question is asked. So you tell me that you guys don't sin. A lot of people are quick with the mouth to say, no, we don't. All right. But let's see what the Bible says. Read. If we say that we have no sin, read, we deceive ourselves. You see that? If we say we have no sin, we deceive only our own selves. All right. Because even the Apostle Paul told us, he said, we see through a glass darkly. All right. We're, we're missing what, like 120 books or like something like that? Mm -hmm. All right. But Christ said, hold fast to what you have already till I come, meaning that the, the tools necessary to gain salvation is right there in front of you. That's right. OK, we see through a glass darkly. So that person that says that he doesn't have no sin on him, he deceived with his own self. OK, but in this walk, you got to understand it's a lot easier to go back into sin than it is to to go forth in righteousness if, listen, listen to me, if you surround yourselves with people that aren't keeping God's laws. That's why holy convocation is so heavy, is so important. That's why I give all praises that we started these classes, all right? I give all praises that, that we're doing things as a camp to where we see each other a few days a week. Chokma, this is what, the seventh, sixth, seventh day that you've been here, right? In, in a row? Brother's been here like seven days in a row. Because we got something going on every night at the school now. Why? Because you go outside, you can you can be easily seduced to go do something else. It's it's much it'd be much more realistic to comprehend that me living in sin for twenty five years prior to repentance, I'd go back to being in wickedness than for me to convert somebody to come back and, and keep the commandments. It, it's just common sense. Is it, it really is common sense, but again, not all sin is common to everybody. All right. So if you say you don't sin, you deceive your own self. All right. But in repentance, if you fall, if you happen to fall, okay, it says a just man falleth seven times. Okay. It's not you know what I fell. Dang. You know what I overcame. You know, or I'm sorry, I. Succumbed to the spirit and I took a bite of that burger that had bacon on it. You know what? I'm now defiled. Let me no longer strive to get the kingdom of heaven. No, you're going to fall. But you have that godly sorrow to work those, to work that repentance behind it. 
Let's go to Psalms 51, oh, verse you 2. To, you want me to finish it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Finish it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, if Verse 8. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Oh, my goodness. I, I, I can't believe I almost <laughs> like that last precept out. All right. We know that the truth, according to Psalms 142, all right, according to Psalms 142, we know that our 119 verse 142 and verse 151 that the truth is the law and the commandments. That's the truth. The truth is not in you if you think that that you, that you don't sin. All right? We all sin. We all fall short. That doesn't mean that you don't strive for those things. All right? Paul said, I die daily. Peter said, I grow in grace. All right? Because we had someone tell us one time that being born again is a one-time thing. You say, you know what? I'm Israel. I'm face the east. Let me throw my prayers. I'm born again now. That's it. That's that. I, I, that's that's Christianity in a a nutshell. There's no way. All right, you die on a daily basis. You're born again on a daily basis, and to this day, I, I still can't fathom his whole understanding behind that because on a daily basis you fight temptation. On the, on a daily basis you may succumb to whatever lust that that you're dealing with. But being born again is a is a is a daily daily process. Ah, oh, my goodness. The truth ain't in you. The the truth is not in you if, if you think that, that you have no sin. That's one of my favorite, favorite scriptures. That's what I read them when they say, well, are you perfect? Well, here, let's see what the word of God says. Let's go to Psalms 51, verse 2. Psalms 51, verse 2. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 51, verse 2. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity. And cleanse me from my sin. So now, this is King David, okay? King David was a great king of Israel. I love the history of King David, all right? I love the fact that I'm, I'm reading about someone that is that is a blood relative of mine, that I can go back and see the strong attributes and characteristics that, that he had, all right? A man of valor, a man of war, and someone that did stumble in this truth. Now, I'm not saying I like the fact that he stumbled, but when I read things like this in Psalms, when he comes into repentance, his godly sorrow that worked that repentance for him. All right. Because a nigga would be like, yeah, I messed up, whatever. Keep it pushing. No, he had the godly sorrow. All right. That's what we all have to have. And for some of us, it, it, it takes a little bit of time to really build up your faith enough to understand how much mercy the Mosai has actually shown us. Because someone will say, oh, well, you guys are all hate. You don't know what love is. There's no one that knows what love is more than a repented Israelite. Because we see ourselves in the scriptures and we see that we are the people that were so rebellious and stiff-necked. We know everything was made for us. He gave us laws and we didn't keep them. There's no one that knows love more than a repented Israelite. All right. So we strive to come back to that thing. But King David said, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. All right. Iniquity, according to Psalms 38, verse 18, is sin. OK, that's what we ask the most high. Wash us from the sin that we're in the midst of. OK, it says and cleanse me from my sin. All right. That's what we got to do. We have to be cleansed from our sin on a daily basis. All right. I mean, we're here in Babylon, the great. OK, the land of confusion. There's sin everywhere. You got to be in the spirit 24-7, 365, okay? Like, for instance, when uh, we go out and teach in Vegas, I like teaching in Vegas because there's always foot traffic, right? There's always crowds. But I hate teaching in Vegas because there's so much temptation everywhere. The only place in Vegas that's safe to look is up. Literally, it's up. Because everywhere you look, everyone's half naked, right? Everyone is doing something. And even if you look on the ground, because when you walk the strip in Vegas, they they hand out those cards for you to, to get prostitutes. They do? Yes. So you got cards of half naked women, right? And people get them and they, they throw them on the ground. So, so the ground is littered with cards. So you can't even look at the ground, you literally have to just look up. Man, I'm telling you, Sin City for real. 
Let's go to Psalms. Let's stay in Psalms 119 verse 9. Mm -hmm. Psalms 119 verse 9. All right. For those that have, may have just joined, today's topic is Godly Sorrow Works Repentance. All right. I uh, pray everyone's doing well in this captivity, holding up well, because we have to understand that at one point in time, this captivity will come to an end. All right. But is it going to come to an end with you or are you going to be saved, be taken to the wilderness, learn how to keep the commandments perfect and then inherit the kingdom of heaven? You won't do that unless you have godly sorrow. All right. Read. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 9. Wherewithal shall a man cleanse his way? So now, we, we, we all know Isaiah 28, verse 10, precept must be upon precept. So when King David comes into repentance and he says, um, cleanse me from, from my iniquity, right? Cleanse me from my sin. Now the question is being asked, how can a young man cleanse his way? Read. By taking heed thereto according to thy word. See that? We take heed to the word of God. That's how we're cleansed from our iniquity and from our sin. All right? The word of God is his commandments. There's no such thing as cleanse me from my way and let me read a Joe Osteen self-help book. And all of a sudden now you're holier than thou. It doesn't work like that. All right? It does not work like that. All right? There's no such thing as reading a, a T.D. Jakes book or a Creflo Dollar book to be cleansed from your iniquity. The only way to be cleansed from your iniquity is taking heed to the word of God. That's it. That is it. All right. You you tell that to a Christian and then they'll tell you, well, he's not a Jew that's one one outwardly, but one that's inwardly. A spiritual Jew. Right. Not even understanding what that even means. <laughs> All right. And in, in Romans 2, when Paul says that, because someone says, oh, you're in fringes. Oh, you're over-righteous. Well, you know, you're not a Jew because you're a Jew outwardly. It starts inwardly. And I'm like, you're absolutely right. Because it starts in the man. It starts. It starts in here. All right? It starts in your heart. Once you take heed and you have that fear, then it slowly manifests itself outwardly. Why? Because your faith is being built up. All right? I didn't wake up one day and say, oh, man, you know what? I'm an Israelite. Crazy. Let me start reading the Bible and keeping these laws. Let me... Start wearing fringes. No. So a, a seed was planted. The Most High provided the increase. And then it was told to me, hey, you got to you gotta get fringes. Hey, you got to grow a beard. That's when it became outwardly. After my faith was already to the level to say, you know what? If that's what the Bible says, if that's what thus said the Lord as it is written, then that's what I'm going to do. All right. Let's go to Proverbs 28 verse 13. Proverbs 28, verse 13. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 28, verse 13. He that covereth his, his sins shall not prosper. Really? But whosoever confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. So we have to understand that whichever one of us con confesses our sins, that's when, when the Mosai is going to say, okay, you know what? That's when you have mercy. Just like you read in the book of Hosea chapter 5 and verse 15. He says he's going to turn his back on us until we acknowledge our offense. You can't get mercy from the Mosai unless you acknowledge your sin. You have to confess your sins. That's what repentance is. In order to know what to repent from, you have to know God's loss. You have to know what you're guilty of. It's like... it. it it's common sense. You go into a courtroom and they say, okay, you've been charged with possession of marijuana. How do you plead? You're not going to say, marijuana, what is that? What, what's, what's, what's marijuana? <laughs> you, you, you have to know what laws you're breaking in order to say, you know what? Okay, yes, I plead guilty. Or no, I plead not guilty. Same thing with us. We face the East and we say, Heavenly Father, forgive me for I have sinned. I have broken the dietary law. I have broken the law of, of, of marriage, so on and so forth. Whatever sin that you were in the midst of, you have to know what law you're breaking in order to know your offense. All right. No one's going to come to you and say, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, most of the ignorance I hear is from people that are actually quote unquote Israelites. All right. Because I live here in downtown Phoenix and I meet a lot of people that I haven't, I haven't seen them lately. All praises, all praises. Cause I couldn't deal with them for a while. I haven't seen them in like a few months. But I would see certain people and, and, and they would say certain things. And they'd say, oh, no, you know, 
you don't have to do that. You don't have to keep the law. We're all going to be regenerated in the kingdom anyways. So with that doctrine is you can sin all you want and you'll come back in the kingdom. That's Christianity. Right. That's that's what that is. So why does he say, blessed is he that keeps the commandments that have right to the tree of life? In the last chapter of the Bible, why would he say that? Why are we striving to keep the commandments if we, if we can just sin? What's the point of saying, hey, have godly sorrow, that way you can have that repentance? It doesn't make any, any sense. That's, that's someone that doesn't want to be reproved, that wants to stay following their lust. And, and we pray for the brothers and sisters that follow that madness, that they come out of it before it's too late. All right? Because Babylon the Great will be destroyed. All right? And all the other nations that follow behind the doctrine of Babylon the Great will be destroyed. And we pray before it's too late that they come out of that foolishness. Because it's leading to nothing but them being missile meat. There'll be nothing but walking charcoal. Missile meat. All right? Let's go to... Uh, Sirach 1 verse 26 Sirach 1 verse 26 Nothing but missile me And you think the Mosai is not going to give us the Satisfaction to, to be to, to say I told you so That's why before When I was new to the truth and I would say something to people And they would scoff and everything I'd be like Oh you know, it would vex my spirit a little bit. But now I sit back and I'm like, you know what? The reason why you're laughing is because that spirit within you knows that I'm right. That's okay. That's a-okay. Let me just keep doing what I'm doing. You keep doing what you're doing. And I'm going to say, I told you so at the end days. Sirach 1 verse 26. All right. This is the book of Sirach or Ecclesiasticus out of the Apocrypha. Chapter 1 verse 26. If thou desire wisdom, keep the commandments so we keep the commandments to get wisdom all right the bible is so redundant so for those that say that the apocrypha don't belong in the 66 they're ignorant they don't know the word of god okay leave those people okay because the because the 66 tell you the exact same thing if you desire wisdom keep the commandments read on and the lord shall give her unto thee so the her is referring to wisdom okay because there's another doctrine, and we'll have to touch that one time too, that the 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 her in in uh Songs of Sol no, I'm sorry, Wisdom of Solomon, that that's the someone someone told me, I don't I don't know what organization they're with or camp they're with, but they said that there's the most high and then wisdom is his wife. Because women are the ones that like decorate houses and stuff. So wisdom is the one that formed everything to make it look beautiful. And then they had a son and that's Christ. Christianity is a hell of a drug. Um, and, and I'm trying to ex word it exactly how they said it. But I know by the way they said it that <laughs> they really believed that thing. Like they really believed it. And this was someone that knew they were Israel too. That's what I'm saying. Most of the BS I hear comes from, from Israelites. And I'm like, no, her is referring to wisdom. And they're like, no, her is referring to the wife of the Most High. They, that's that's the mother God. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. I'm like, All right. <laughs> Anyways, if you desire wisdom, keep the commandments. That person obviously wasn't keeping no commandments. That's why they could be so foolish as to say that the her is the most high's wife that created everything when the bible clearly says that christ was the creator of all things under the instructions of his father but anyways you want me to read this next one yeah yeah verse 27 for the fear of the lord is wisdom and instruction and the faith and meekness are his delight you see that he delights in us having faith and meekness okay faith in what Real quick, let's get First Ezra two. First Ezra chapter two. No, I'm sorry, Second Ezra two and verse thirty five. Let's see where our faith has to be. Let's let's get an example of how strong our faith has to be here in these last days. Second Ezra, I'm sorry, Second Ezra one, verse thirty five. I'm all I'm all over the place. This is the book of Second Ezra out of the Apocrypha. Chapter 1, verse 35. 
your houses will I give to a people that shall come. So the houses, okay, that he will give to a people that shall come, meaning future tense, that's talking about us, okay? Us that come back into repentance. Those that have the godly sorrow to understand that we've done wickedly come back and serve our Father on righteousness. Read. Which not having heard of me, yet shall believe me. We haven't heard that we were the Israelites at one point in time. At one point in time, we thought that we can just be Israel but not keep no commandments. But now we understand who we are and we're going to believe what this Bible says. Read on. To whom I have showed no signs. Read. Yet they shall do that I have commanded them. Did you see the uh, Red Sea part? Did you see the plagues, plagues in Egypt? I didn't. So we didn't see all the signs that he showed our forefathers and foremothers, but yet we shall do the things that he commanded us. We didn't see these great miracles, all right? But yet when he said a man should have a beard, we grew our beards. When he said a man should order his household, all right, we stood up as men and ordered our households all right. Keeping the Sabbath, all right? Keeping the dress code, so on and so forth. We didn't see all these miracles and signs, but we're still doing what he commands us to do. That's the level of faith that we have here in these last days. That's right. Read on. Verse 36. They have seen no prophets. Read. Yet they shall call their sins to remembrance and acknowledge them. So we have seen no prophets. Yet we call our sins to remembrance. And we acknowledge them. But like we read, we we confess and we forsake them. Okay? Even though a time may come where we may fall. Okay? But we have that godly sorrow and we keep it moving. Read on. Verse 37. I take to witness the grace of the people to come. Whose little ones rejoice in gladness. We're the ones rejoicing in gladness. Because no longer are we niggas and Hispanics. Mexicans and African Americans. All right? Native American Indians. We rejoice because we know that we're the Israelites and salvation is promised to us. As long as we just do simply what the Bible commands us to do. Read. And though they have not seen me with bodily eyes, yet in spirit they believe the thing that I say. That's the level of faith that we have. We have not seen these things with bodily eyes. We didn't see the burning bush. All right. We didn't see the Mosai hold these suns still. That way we can have light. That way we can... Uh, defeat the heathen in war. Or Jesus resurrected. Mm -hmm. Right? We didn't see Christ resurrected. Okay? We didn't see Christ raise people from the dead. Mm -hmm. But in the spirit, we believe the things that are said. We read this and say, this ain't some story I'm reading. All right? This is history that I'm reading that pertains to me. So I believe everything that's said. Especially when you start to understand prophecy and see prophecy unfolding right before you. Then you understand this is truly the only real book in the earth. The only rule book in the earth. All right. So that's the level of faith. So now go back to what you just read. First Ezra. I'm sorry. Uh, Sirach 1 verse 27 again. Yes. Sirach 1 verse 27. The book of Sirach Ecclesiasticus from the Apocrypha. Chapter 1 verse 27. For the fear of the Lord is wisdom and instruction so us fearing god is our wisdom and our instructions read and faith and meekness are his delight so we just gave you an example of the level of faith that we need to have here in these last days all right and he delights in us having that type of faith why because he didn't show us no signs but we still believe the word that he's putting forth for us to follow it says and meekness meekness being meek is someone that's told something and they just do it there's a reason why Christ has always given the analogies of being converted, become as a little child, be born again. Because you tell a kid, this guy is black. He's going to say, okay, this guy is black. He doesn't know any better. All right? That's being meek. You're, you're told something, you just do it. If someone's not telling you to sin, then it's then just be quiet and just do it. That's it. All right? A, a lot of people come into this and they want to bring in their worldly wisdom and knowledge that they have for everything else. I'm not saying that brothers and sisters don't have particular gifts that they can bring to the body to benefit us as a nation. I'm not saying that. I'm talking about the people that come in and then they think, well, you know, I've been reading the Bible my entire life. Well, how long have you been knowing that you're an Israelite? Six days. But well, then shut the hell up. You're six days old. All right? 
just be quiet and be meek and learn, okay? You can learn something by being quiet. That's why it says be swift to hear and slow to speak. All right? It's a great scripture. I'll praise. I didn't have, I didn't have that thing written down. Let's go to... Let's see. Let's go to Matthew 5, verse 16. Matthew 5, verse 16. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. So we're supposed to let our light so shine among men so they can see our good works. All right. A part of coming into repentance is letting our light shine. All right. Not not being being afraid to wear fringes. All right. That way someone says, oh, or what are those things? Someone at work told me, he said, what are those stupid things on your shirt? I said, "Oh, this is this is my uh, defense from dying in uh, nuclear warfare that uh, that uh, that uh, you're gonna die in." And he's like, "What do you mean by that?" I'm like, "Bro, this is a commandment of God to keep." And he's like, "Is it really?" Yes, it is really. All right, people want to poke and make fun and everything else. Some people might may say, "Oh, uh, this is you know," <laughs> and they tuck them away. No, we have to let our light so shine. That that that's a form of having that godly sorrow. Coming back to our heritage, letting our light shine and not being ashamed to say when someone says, you know, what are you, Muslim? Mm -hmm. Oh, for instance, myself and my brother, Officer Zakar, we both have our names legally changed. All right. I'm legally Amorai Ben Israel. He's legally Issachar Ben Israel. And when we traveled together on planes, Every single time we get stopped together and, and, and we get checked. We're always the random searches, all, always, every single time. Why? Because they see the last name Israel. They see beards, you know, and they're like, okay, yeah, search them. But we don't care. We're, we're letting our, our light shine among men, okay? We're not a, a, ashamed of, of anything, of anything that, that, that comes towards us. Because I have known people that get the real small fringes. Right. Hmm. We call them the uh, the uh, leave me alone fringes. Mm -hmm. Leave me alone. That's what we call those fringes. Those are the leave me alone fringes. I don't want to attract too much attention to myself. OK. Now, use wisdom. I'm not saying have the big Pharisee fringes 24 seven. All right. But never be ashamed to let your light shine. OK. Because that's a form of showing that you have that godly sorrow that works your repentance. OK. If someone says you don't eat pork. Are you a Muslim? Hell no, I'm not a Muslim. I'm 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 real quick with two. They're like, "What are you, Muslim?" Hell no, I ain't no sinner. You kidding me? All Muslims are gonna die, and they're like, "Oh my goodness, this guy's crazy." No, absolutely not. All right, I let my light so shine that way. This is why. Read on. Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. You see that? So they may see our good works and glorify our Father, which is in heaven. That's why I let my light shine. So my Father can be glorified, okay? It's not for me to be like, man, my fringes are cold. They're on point. That's what's up. All praises. You know? I mean, I, I will admit when I first came into repentance, I was like, you know, I, I want everyone to see him because I was just so happy to have fringes. You know, I was the store like, ask, ask, go ahead, ask. <laughs> But but it's it's not to be seen of men. It's it's to glorify my father, all right. And that's me coming back into repentance and having that godly sorrow and saying, you know what, I apologize and I ask for mercy, the faith of your son, for breaking something as, as something as simple as wearing fringes. God's gonna judge me for not wearing fringes. Absolutely, He's gonna judge you for not wearing fringes. All right. Let's go to the book of. The prayer of Manassas in the Apocrypha. The prayer of Manassas in the Apocrypha. One of my favorite prayers. One that I keep in mind often. One that I would um, highly recommend that brothers and sisters read on a continual basis uh, when you come into fasting or, or when you come into a place where you feel like your spirit's not right with the Most High, 
All right, read this. But again, you could read it 10 times a day, but if there's no application behind it, then it doesn't mean anything. All right, but read this. This is the prayer of Manassas, king of Judah, when he was holding captive in Babylon. So now this is one was one of the uh, kings of Judah. Okay, he went into wickedness. And this is the prayer that he sent forth to the Most High when he was held captain in Babylon. Okay, read. O Lord, O mighty God of our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and of their righteous seed, who hath made heaven and earth with all the ornament thereof, who has bound the sea by the word of thy commandment, who has shut up the deep and sealed it by thy terrible and glorious name, whom all men fear and tremble before thy power, for the majesty of thy glory cannot be borne, and thine angry threatening towards sinners is importable. But thy merciful promise is Im unmeasurable and unsearchable. It says, the threatening towards sinners is unportable, but thy merciful promise is unmeasurable and unsearchable. All right. I, I touched earlier that we don't, that people don't really understand how much mercy the Most High has shown us. All right. And I was bringing something out to my wife the other night. I said, the Most High's first creation was his son, his only begotten son. Okay. Now, Anyone that's online that has children, okay, I this may hit home with you more than those of us that don't have children, but follow me here. He sent his only begotten son to die. The scripture says in the book of Isaiah 53 that it pleased him to bruise him, okay, because he didn't send him and have him die of natural causes. He didn't die in his sleep. He was brutally beaten to death, all right? So the mercy that we're being shown and the fear that we have to have on us we have to keep in mind that his only begotten son was brutally murdered for the iniquity of us. He was mutilated. Right, exactly. He had his beard pulled out. He was embarrassed, everything else. So you examine us in, in, in that thing. Who are we to, to think that, that you know, because there's some of us that live 80, 90 years and they die in their sleep. The most I could take you out at any second, any day that we have life on this earth, that's the most I showing you mercy. All right. That's the most I showing you mercy. And I, and I pray that I'm articulating that in a way for you to understand, because that thing, when you think about it, puts so much fear, puts, puts so much fear on me. I'm like, dang, that's crazy. Here I am breaking the commandments every day for 25 plus years. And, he, and I still have life and can come back into repentance. And this is his, his only begotten son that came and did no sin and was brutally beaten to death. Like you said, was uh, mutilated. It's a heavy, heavy thing. That's why it says that his mercy is unsearchable. It's unmeasurable. We can't fathom the amount of mercy the Most High has shown us. All right, read on. For thou art the Most High Lord of great compassion, long-suffering, very merciful and repentance of the evils of men. Read. Thou, O Lord, according to thy great goodness, has promised repentance and forgiveness to them that have sinned against thee, and of thine infinite mercies has appointed repentance unto sinners, that they may be saved. Thou, therefore, O Lord, that art the God of the just has not appointed repentance to the just, as to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, which have not sinned against thee. So now for when, this is digressing for a second, for when people say that no one's perfect, this lets you know that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, guess what, were perfect. That's why it says they have not sinned against them, because what makes us perfect is keeping God's laws. All right, read. But thou, but thou hast appointed repentance unto me, that am a sinner. See that? See, see what the king is acknowledging when he was when he was holding captive. He's acknowledging his fault, his sin. He's showing forth that godly sorrow. He said, "You you have mercy that's unsearchable and unmeasurable." 
and you didn't give repentance to those that have not sinned against you, but those like me that have sinned. That's what we got to do. We have to acknowledge our sin and understand that we fall short of the glory, like how Christians say. But that don't mean we stay short of the glory. We still strive for it on a daily basis. Read. For I have sinned above the number of the sands of the sea. Read. My transgressions, O Lord, are multiplied. My transgressions are multiplied, and I am not worthy to behold and see the height of heaven for the multitude of mine iniquities. Hmm. I am bowed down with many iron bands that I cannot lift up mine head, neither have any release. For I have provoked thy wrath and done evil before thee. So now he's, he's not only acknowledging that he's, that he's a sinner above sinners, but he's acknowledging that he's in, in the position that he's in because of his own iniquity, his own sin. All right? Because a lot of us like to make excuses. Well, this brother or this sister, or if it wasn't for this particular situation, no. You are where you are because of your own personal actions. All right? There's no such thing as unjust judgment when it comes to the Most High. There's no such thing as that. All right? So if you're going through a particular situation, it may not always be because of sin, but... You need to re-examine yourself, whether you be in the faith, and say, you know what? Where have I fallen short according to God's laws to put me in this particular situation? Read. For I have provoked thy wrath and done evil before thee. I did not thy will. His will is his laws. Read. Neither kept I thy commandments. Read. I have set up abominations and have multiplied offenses. Now, therefore, I bow the knee of mine heart, beseeching thee of grace. I have sinned, O Lord. I have sinned, and I acknowledge mine iniquities. Wherefore, I humbly beseech thee, forgive me, O Lord. Forgive me, and destroy me not with mine iniquities. Be not angry with me forever. Be not angry with me forever. Because our forefathers understood regeneration, okay? He knew that he would come back in a different lifetime, and he didn't want to be judged for his prior iniquities. He's asking for that righteous sorrow. That He's asking for that forgiveness of the Most High to be merciful. Read on. Be not angry with me forever by reserving evil for me. Neither condemn me into the lower parts of the earth. For thou art the God, even the God of them that repent, and in me thou wilt show all thy goodness. For thou wilt save me, that I am unworthy, according to thy great mercy. Therefore I will praise thee forever all the days of my life, for all the powers of the heaven do praise thee, and thine is the glory forever and ever. Amen. And that's where we give all praise and glory to the Heavenly Father. All right. We understand that we're not worthy of the mercy that's been shown. All right. But we thank the Most High in the faith of His Son that we were woken up to this marvelous light out of darkness. And this is one of the best examples that I can provide in the scriptures to show a, a forefather that's showing forth that godly sorrow. All right. It's not just, okay, I sin. Please forgive me. He's acknowledging I'm in this position because of my own abominations. I'm in this position because of my own sin. I'm not worthy for you to, to forgive me, but you but you repent from those that come back and seek you. It's the same thing with us. We have to have that same exact type of godly sorrow. All right. Let's go to Matthew 26, verse 33. Matthew 26, verse 33. Twenty six thirty three. Yes, sir. This is the book of Matthew, chapter twenty six, verse thirty three. Now, this is the history that I had mentioned earlier. All right. About Peter. Read on. Peter answered and said unto him, though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I never be offended. You see what Peter said? All right. Peter spoke strong to the Lord. He said, even though all men will be offended with you, I will never be offended. All right? All right? Christ, I got your back. I got you. I'm Peter. I'm strong in the Lord. <laughs> let's, let's read on. G verse 34. 
Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee that this night before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. So Christ comes back and says, you know what? All right, you know what? You you uh you you speak a good game there, Peter. All right, but like how it says in the book of Samuel two and verse three, talk no more so exceedingly arrogant and proud, but by your actions are you weighed. All right. So he says, okay, Peter, it sounds good, but tonight the cock will crow three times, or before the cock crows, you'll deny me three different times. Read. Peter said unto him. Though I should die with thee, yet will I not deny thee. Likewise, also said all the disciples. He said, I will die with you before I deny you. Okay. And then his speech led to the other disciples saying, yeah, we got you like that too, Christ. All right. And that's what we see a lot of times in these last days. We don't understand persecution like the forefathers went through persecution. All right. We don't go through nothing today compared to what the forefathers and foremothers went through when you read the scriptures. All right. But let's jump. Stay in the same chapter. Jump to verse 69. Let's read the end result. All right. After Peter had these these big, strong words and oh, man, I would rather die than ever deny you. I got you, Christ. Let's see the end result. Verse 69. Now, Peter sat without in the palace. And a damsel came unto him, saying, Thou also wast with Jesus of Galilee? So now a, a, a woman came and identified Peter and said, You were also with Jesus of Galilee, weren't you? Read. But he did not before them all, saying, I know not what thou sayest. And when he was going out into the porch, another maid saw him, and said unto them that were there, this fellow was also with Jesus of Nazareth. So now he says, no, nah, I don't know what you're talking about. He leaves the porch, goes, goes into a different part, and he gets identified again by somebody else. He gets identified again by somebody else and says the same thing. Yeah, you were also a, a follower of Christ. Read on. And again, he denied with an oath. I do not know the man. So now he takes his denial up a notch. Not only did he deny him, but he says he denied it with an oath. Okay. At this point, he's like, man, on my mama, I don't, I don't know that dude. <laughs> he takes it to a whole other level. Right. Read. And after a while came unto him, they that stood by and said to Peter, surely thou also art one of them for thy speech bereath thee. So now the third time he's being identified Nah, you, you, you have the same type of speech that he has. All right. We know that you're with him. Read. Then began he to curse and to swear, saying, I know not the man. And immediately the cock crew. You see that? He says, I know not the man. He went from, nah, I don't know him to listen, listen all, on everything. I don't know that dude to listen, mother effers. OK. And jumped completely out of the spirit and denied him. And immediately the cock crew. Read verse 75. And Peter remembered the word of Jesus, which said unto him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And he went out and wept bitterly. So now he remembered everything that the Lord and Savior said. And then he went out and he wept bitterly. All right. Why? Because everything that Christ said came into fruition. As much as he had that 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 big speech and that big talk he he did exactly what christ said he denied him three different times all right so now again the, the question is is peter going to get the kingdom let's go to matthew 19 verse 28 all right matthew 19 verse 28 oh officer if i may yeah of course uh for all of our periscope viewers if you could just uh sh go ahead and share this lesson on Facebook, on your Twitter. Uh, we're trying to get as many viewers as possible. So go ahead and swipe that screen to the right. Hit that share button. All praises. Also, uh, Israel, stay in the spirit. This this Edomite Mike that's, that's scoffing, pay him no mind. All right? It's just it's just the spirit that's uh, within him that's being vexed because he knows that his future is slavery. All right? I Pay him no mind. Pay, pay these scoffers no mind. 
This is the book of Matthew, chapter 19, verse 28. And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Let's go back to... Let me see. Second Ezra 1 again. Second Ezra 1. All right. Because he said, Ye that have followed me within the regeneration shall sit on 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. All right. Real quick. Digress. Throw out a, a, a little nugget for you guys. Because he says the word regeneration for a particular purpose. All right. Uh, Second Ezra 1 and verse 38. All right. This is the book of Second Ezra out of the Apocrypha. Chapter 1, verse 38. And now, my brother, behold what glory, and see the people that cometh from the east. So see the people that cometh from the east. Okay, it's talking about the nation of Israel, Jerusalem. Read. Unto whom I will give for leaders. To whom I will give you for leaders. Read. Abraham, Isaac. And Jacob. So those are the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay? That's who the covenants were made with. Read. Osias. That's Hosea. Amos. Amos. And Micaeus. That's uh Micah. Joel. Joel. Uh, Abidas. That's uh Obadiah. Obadiah. Mm -hmm. And Jonas. That's Jonah. Nahum. Nahum. Habakkuk. Habakkuk. Sophonius. Zephanias. Agias, Haggai, Zachary, uh, Zechariah, and Malachi, Malachi, which is called also an angel of the Lord. So now we have to understand that he gave these people for us for leaders. OK, so when Christ says that you that have followed me in the regeneration from Osias on down. First off, these are Greek names. That's why they're written differently, okay? But you got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, all right? That's the 12 apostles right there, all right? So Hosea, Malachi, um, Zephaniah, Zechariah, those were the 12 apostles, all right? Those are the ones that will be sitting on the 12 thrones judging the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel, all right? So yes, Peter is getting the kingdom of heaven. Why? This is why. 2 Corinthians 7, verse 10. 2 Corinthians 7 and verse 10. This is the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 7, verse 10. For godly sorrow worketh repentance. You see that? For godly sorrow works repentance. All right? Peter showed forth that godly sorrow. Okay? King Manasseh showed forth that godly sorrow. We, in turn, have to follow the examples of... Of our forefathers and foremothers and show forth that godly sorrow that works our repentance. OK, because, again, you can say all you want. Hey, I'm sorry for what I've done. But if you have no ashes behind it, then it's all null and void. You're going to be in the same spot, the same exact place. All right. You don't want to be that person that goes being lukewarm in this truth, given the appearance of righteousness. And then those chariots come and you're like, hey, what about me? Christ said he'd rather you be hot or cold. Those that are lukewarm will get spewed out of his mouth. All right? We have to have that godly sorrow. Let's go to Acts 3, verse 19. Acts 3 and verse 19. So now as we, as we come into repentance, we have to identify what repentance is and how to obtain and, and how to actually repent in the Lord. Acts 3.19. This is the book of Acts, chapter 3, verse 19. Repent ye therefore, and be converted. You see that? It says, repent ye therefore, and be converted. Repent and be converted. Read. That your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. So we have to repent and be converted, Okay. Being converted means to change. It doesn't say repent and continue to be that same person that, that you continuously have been for the past 20, 30, 40, 50 years, so on and so forth. 
we have to repent and change. And there's one thing that changes us. Psalms 19, verse 7. It's on the way. Psalms 19 and verse 7. Let's see. The only thing that can change us for us to be converted, to becoming that new creature in Christ, to having that godly sorrow. Psalms 19, verse 7. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 19, verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect. You see that? The law of God is perfect. So when he says, thou shalt not kill, that's perfect. When he says, thou shalt not steal, that's perfect. All right? But even all his other laws, when he says, don't eat the swine, that's perfect. When he says a woman shouldn't wear pants, but wear a dress, that's perfect. There's nothing. There's no flaws in God's law. So, that, so when Christianity says God's laws are done away with, it makes no sense. Why would you get rid of something that's perfect? If God's laws are, are done away with, then, then we can all be more um, murderers and thieves and whoremongers and, and everything else. It doesn't make any sense. All right. The law of the Lord is perfect. Doing what? Read. Converting the soul. There's that word converting again. That's what converts us. That's what changes us is God's laws. All right. It was God's laws that were brought up to me that said, you know what? I can't live my life according to A, B, and C no more. Okay. It's God's laws that identified certain things to me. I didn't know tattoos were wrong. I didn't know eating pork was wrong. I didn't know not keeping the Sabbath was wrong. It's God's laws that changed me into understanding that. And then I became wise and the fear came on me and so on and so forth. And I grew in the spirit. That's right. And now I go out and teach other people the exact same thing. Why? Because I want to get the hell out of captivity. All right. Let's go to Galatians 1 verse 13. All right. We're going to read one more example. Okay. So we read about uh, King Manassas. We read about Peter. Now let's read about Paul. What was that again? Uh, Galatians 1 verse 13. Book of Galatians 1 verse 13. All right. Let's read about the forefather Paul who is responsible for writing most of the New Testament. All right. This is the book of Galatians, chapter 1, verse 13. For ye have heard of my conversation in the past in the Jews' religion. How that beyond measure I have persecuted the church of God and wasted it. So now, prior to coming into repentance, because we have to understand, Paul's the one that wrote Corinthians. So when he says, have godly sorrow, he, he knows firsthand because he's the one that, 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 that wrote it. And at one point in time, he was persecuting the church of God. He was going around killing those that follow Christ. Okay? Killing those that follow Christ. Okay? Let's read Philippians 3 verse 5. Philippians 3 verse 5. This is the book of Philippians chapter 3 verse 5. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel. So now, Paul was circumcised the eighth day like, like how the law says in the book of Genesis. Read of the tribe of Benjamin. Read. And Hebrew of the Hebrew. Not just a Hebrew, but I was a Hebrew of the Hebrews, he said. I was a top-notch Hebrew. Read. As touching the law, a Pharisee. So a Pharisee means a master of the law. All right? He was studied under the laws. So you think at one point in time he never read, Thou shalt not kill? Of course he understood, Thou shalt not kill. Okay? But in his wickedness, he was persecuting the church of God. Now, in repentance, he comes back, and then what was he doing? He was seeking the Most High through his godly sorrow. All right? Let's go to Matthew 12 and verse 31. Almost done. A couple more scriptures. Matthew 12, verse 31. Because the question gets asked a lot to me. At one point in time is too much too much or when is it too much to turn to come back into righteousness pretty much um there was a, a brother that had told me that he got put out of a camp because they told him that he had committed sin that wasn't worthy of repentance and i said brother that's not scriptural i was like first off the camp that put you out don't keep no script <laughs> don't keep no commandments anyways he said yeah i committed one of the seven deadly sins so they said i have no no uh, repentance and i'm like that's not scriptural whatsoever okay so now for those that that think okay it's already too late for me i can't come in to repentance all right that's not the case as long as you got air in your lungs okay as long as you can face the east and and, and repent with that godly sorrow all right, you can seek the kingdom of heaven. 
Matthew 12, verse 31. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 12, verse 31. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy, blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. So now Christ says all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. Okay. All manner of you breaking whatever laws and, and blasphemy, meaning lies, you will be forgiven. Okay. You will be forgiven no matter what you do. Read. But the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. So now he says, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. All right. We know that the Holy Ghost, according to Acts chapter 7, verse 51 through 53, is God's laws. So he says, all manner of sin shall be forgiven, but blasphemy against the Holy Ghost, that shall not be forgiven. All right. Keep that in, in mind. Israel, read on. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. So if you speak against the Son of Man, which is Christ, it says he says, you shall be forgiven. Read. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him. Read. Neither in this world, neither in the world to come. So Christ, out of his own mouth, says, you can speak against me, but you can't speak against the Holy Ghost. Now, again, according to Acts 7, 51 through 53, the Holy Ghost is God's laws, his commandments. According to 1 John or I'm sorry, John, the first chapter, Christ is the word made flesh. Christ is the law. So therefore, he is the Holy Ghost. So what is he saying when he says you can speak against me, but you can't speak against the Holy Ghost? Because it's one of the same. It's the same thing. All right. This is what Christianity doesn't understand. This is what these unearned, these unlearned Israelite camps don't understand. All right. The Holy Ghost is God's commandments. All right. God's laws. According to Acts 7. Verse 51 through 53, all right? Acts chapter 7, verse 51 through 53 explains that the Holy Ghost is God's laws, all right? So now, let's get the explanation on this, all right? Let's get Revelations 16, verse 11. Let's see what Christ is explaining here when he says, you can speak against the Son of Man, but you can't speak against the Holy Ghost because it won't be forgiven you in this world, neither the world to come. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 16, verse 11. And blaspheme the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores, and repented not in their deeds. You see that? And they repented not in their deeds. Blasphemy against the Holy Ghost means you're in the midst of sin and you die in your sin. That's what made King David different. Why? Because he repented from his sins. That's what made King David. Uh, Manasseh is different. He repented from his sins while he still had breath in him. That's what made all the righteous forefathers and foremothers different. All right. They were in the midst of sin and they repented. Blasphemy is the Holy Ghost, meaning you're in the midst of sin and you don't repent and you die in that sin. All right. Acts chapter 7. Here, let's just get it. Acts 7, verse 51. Acts 7, verse 51. Acts 7 verse 51. This is the scripture right here, brother, to prove to you that the Holy Ghost is the laws. All right. This is the book of Acts chapter 7 verse 51. Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears. So now when you start in, in the book of Acts chapter 7 in the first verse, all right, the forefather Stephen is going over the history of the nation of Israel. So now he's saying, ye stiff-necked, you were always uncircumcised in your heart and ears. Read. Ye do always resist the Holy Ghost. So now the subject matter is what? The Holy Ghost. He says you always resist the Holy Ghost. Remember, he's giving the history of when Israel was in the wilderness. Okay, read. As your fathers did, so do ye. So now a Christian will say that the Holy Ghost was only come upon us in the New Testament. But, but the forefather Stephen is giving the example that the forefathers in the wilderness also resisted the Holy Ghost. Now he's saying the way that they resist the Holy Ghost back then is the same way that you're doing it now. Read. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? Read. And they have slain them which showed before of the coming of the just one. The just one is Christ. Read. Of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers. Read. Who have received the law. Who have received the what? 
who have received the law. So now it's letting you know that we received the law, just like our forefathers received the law in the wilderness, read. By the disposition of angels. By the messengers of God, read. And have not kept it. And have not kept it. The same way that our forefathers did not receive, or I'm sorry, did not keep the law in the wilderness. That's why all the curses from Deuteronomy 28, 15 through 68 fell upon us. Is the same exact way our people are stiff neck and not are and not coming back and keeping the laws these last days. All right, it's the same exact thing. The Holy Ghost is referring to God's commandments. Okay, that's what it is. All right. So with that, Israel, if there's any questions that pertain to today's lesson, all right, that pertain to today's lesson, feel free to ask now. What's up? Judas. Judas? Uh, the... I'll get to that right now. You want to talk more? Yeah. All right. I'm not saying any questions. All right. You can uh, log on every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday and catch us 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. All right. The verse about the 12 apostles, please. Ezra something. First Ezra chapter 1 and verse 38 and 39. Verse 38 through 40. 38 through 40. 38 through 40. All right. Go to Acts 8, 8 verse 17 real quick. All right. Real quick, I'm going to post that up. Okay. You ready? Yeah, yeah. This is the book of Acts, chapter 8, verse 17. Then laid they their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. And then they received the understanding of how to keep the laws. That's it. Nothing deep. Nothing deep, all right? When when we go out and, and we teach the people repentance, all right, the Holy Ghost comes upon them, meaning they understand how to keep the laws, all right? That, that's, that's, nothing, that's nothing deep, okay? That's all that is. Because Christianity had taught us that they receive the Holy Ghost, meaning they say, see my tie, tie my tie, blah, 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 blah. that's not what that is, all right? <laughs> they receive the Holy Ghost, meaning the understanding and how to keep the commandments of the Heavenly Father. All right. If you broke the beard and drank the wine, broke the bread. oh, broke the bread, drank the wine before you came back. Dang, I didn't see it. Did you see it? Can you repost that question? Yeah, can you repost that question uh, about the bread and wine real quick, brother? If if you're taking me to uh, to a scripture that don't pertain to today's lesson, then I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna know, get that real quick. Acts 19 verse three. All right. So I'm trying to figure out if, if you're being genuine or if you or if you or if you're being a scoffer. This is the book of Acts, chapter 19, verse 3. And he said unto them, Unto what then were ye baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. I'm I'm really not sure what your question is on there, but he's he asked the question, How did you learn the gospel? How did you learn how to keep the commandments? And they said under John's baptism. Why? Because John paved the way before Christ. Okay, all praise is if, if he's not a scoffer, all right? You receive the Holy Spirit, okay? The Holy Spirit and the Holy Ghost is the same thing. Give me, give me Romans 7, verse 14. You receive it when you repent as an Israelite, okay? Me, for instance. I repented with the acknowledgement that I'm an Israelite from the tribe of Levi of the nation of Israel. That salvation pertains to me and my nation. So now I keep the commandments of the Heavenly Father in the faith of His Son. All right? You start keeping the commandments, that's how you receive the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. Watch, read that real quick. This is the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 14. 7, verse 14. My apologies. This is the book of Romans, chapter 7. Verse 14, for we, for we know that the law is spiritual. What's spiritual? The law is spiritual. Read. But I am carnal, sold under sin. So there is the law that's spiritual. It's the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost is the most high's laws. The Bible was very, very redundant. All right. It comes back to the same things. That's what he's saying. He was a Israelite, but he backslid. He went back like he went back into the world. That's why I brought up, brother, about um, the whole blasphemy against the Holy Ghost thing. All right. 
as as long as as long as you still got breath in you, bro, and and you repent, you have that godly sorrow. Okay, you can still obtain the kingdom of heaven. That's why I brought that out. Okay, you may have have backslid for a supposition of time. Okay, but now you're back. Just show that, just show that godly sorrow. Okay, and, and continue to keep the commandments. The sister wanted to know if you keep battling with the same sin over and over again, is it best to just leave until you can overcome it, or how should she? She's asking how should you handle that. The the worst thing that you can do would be to leave. All right, the best thing that you can do is is to continue to subscribe to these lessons. That way, you can learn how to deal with those things. All right. The scriptures say that when you repent from a particular spirit, that it returns seven times stronger. Okay. Even Paul dealt with the spirit of lust, and he asked the Lord three times to take that spirit from him. But the Lord said, my grace is sufficient for you. Meaning what? There are some spirits that you may deal with, sis, that you're going to deal with until Christ returns or until you die. Okay. So leaving is not the way to go about it. There's certain spirits you're going to deal with until death. Okay. That's just how it is. Okay. But you got to put on the whole armor of God, like how the scripture says, and find lessons and scriptures that battle that particular spirit. That way you, you can overcome it when you're being tempted. It was an arrogant speech in Isaiah. Uh, 2 Samuel 2 verse 3. 2 Samuel 2 verse 3. All right. But no, leaving, leaving is not the solution. All right. You want to surround yourself by... Uh, like-minded believers all right you want to reach out have have a um have brothers and sisters that, that you can reach out to and speak with go over scriptures that way when you are battling that you can overcome those things should we get that right all right jesus is the comforter okay John 14, 15. Wait, John 14. You need that john 14 verse 26 26 yeah John 14, verse 26. Okay, here we go. This is the book of John, chapter 14, verse 26. Because the brother had a, a question. If the law was already given, then what's the point of Jesus giving us the, the comforter? And this verse explains exactly why he had to give us the comforter. This is the, uh, verse 26. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. The comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, all right, meaning God's laws, read. Whom the Father will send in my name, Read. he shall teach you all things Read. and bring all things to your remembrance. That's the purpose of us having to get the comforter from Christ. All right. Why? Because there would come a time when we would forget all things. So all things would have to come back into our remembrance. All right. When you read in the book of Jeremiah 17 verse 4, it says that we all were discontinued from our heritage. All right. Our heritage is what? Our land, our language, our laws. All right. We don't have our own land. Okay. The heathen own the land of Israel now. We don't have our own language. All right. Whatever Hebrew they think that they're speaking, that's not the pure Hebrew. That's why the Messiah said, I will give you a pure tongue. And we discontinue from keeping our laws. Okay. So all things are now being brought back into remembrance in these last days because we forgot all those things. That's right. All right. That's why the comforter had to come back in the last days. The spirit of the Lord had to come back to us here in the last days days all right but with that israel i'm gonna say shalom again you can catch us every monday wednesday friday here in iuyc arizona tune in to as it is written giving all praises to the most high in christ lord's will we see you all soon say in the spirit shalom most high in christ bless 10 p.m eastern 10 p.m eastern time 10 p.m eastern time all right again shalom most high in christ bless